We are back for another episode of the Disability Comes to Church podcast. Conversations about the church and disabilities are so important. But what exactly do we mean when we talk about disabilities? I don't necessarily mean a dictionary definition or even a list of diagnoses that are included as disabilities. At this point, I'm more asking about what makes something a disability. This leads us to questions of models of disability. How many models are there? There's actually not just one canonical list of models. It all depends on what website you go to and what they do with subsets of each model. When does an emphasis on one element make something a new model? I'm going to go with the three that Rhoda Olkin shares in an article at the APA website, and I'll leave a link to that article in the show notes. Just be aware that there are others, and perhaps I will deal with them in a future episode. The first one is the moral model. This one is very prevalent in church circles. The moral model sees disability as communicating something about the character and actions of the person. This can manifest in a number of ways. One is to see disability as being a divine punishment. An example of this is found in John 9 verse 2 when the disciples said to Jesus, Rabbi, who sinned, this man or his parents, that he was born blind? To them, it was obvious that the disability of blindness was because of sin. The question was just, whose sin? This is also found in the Old Testament book of Job. Job's friends are convinced that his suffering is because of personal sin, and they plead with him to repent. This is a topic that we will return to again in the future. It's definitely one that is easy to embrace. There were times when our children were first diagnosed that we wondered if we had done something wrong and that God was punishing us. It was not a part of my theology, and logically, I knew it was not true, but that did not stop the questions from rising up. The flip side of that experience of the moral model is seeing it as something that God is doing to bless someone or is an act of confidence in someone on behalf of God. For example, numerous people told us that God gave us children with autism because he knew what great parents we were. In terms of the person with a disability, it may be about seeing them as an inspiration as they overcome their disability. An example of this could be Nick Vucicic, who has no arms or legs. While this is fine, this could also lead to what is called inspiration porn. Before your imagination runs wild, Inspiration porn is when we make a big deal about disabled people doing normal things and able people are drawn to those acts. An example might be seeing a person in a wheelchair in a grocery store and going up to them and saying, good for you for getting out and buying your own groceries. Many people in your state would have ended their lives by now. You're such an inspiration. I'm not suggesting that Nick Vucicic or Joni Erickson Tata are inspiration born. They are accomplishing significant ministry and should be complimented on what they have accomplished. But this would have been worthy of praise even if they were not disabled. The second model is the medical model. This is probably the model that most people default to. A disability is something that is diagnosed by a medical professional. So, our children were considered disabled once they received an official diagnosis from a developmental pediatrician. If you search online for disabilities, you'll find lists of diseases or injuries that are considered disabilities. This makes the medical professionals the gatekeepers of disability. You can walk into a doctor's office as an abled person and walk out after getting a diagnosis of diabetes and identify as disabled. There's a lot of criticism of the medical model within the disability community, and rightfully so. However, I do see a lot of value in the process of diagnosing an illness and injury. 
The diagnosis is not the full story of disability, but it is part of it. When I have experienced symptoms that concern me, it has been a top priority for me to receive a diagnosis. Some people disagree with this. Usually contrasted with the medical model is the social model. The social model attempts to distinguish between an impairment and a disability. The social model would say that a brain injury or cerebral palsy would be an impairment, but they would not be disabling in and of themselves. What makes an impairment a disability is when society puts up barriers that disable people with those impairments. Buildings that are not accessible for wheelchairs, communication that relies on visuals that blind people cannot see, jobs that rely on social interactions that might be a challenge for an autistic person. If these social issues were fixed, the impairment might remain, but it would no longer be a disability. This is the difference between the social model and the medical model. The medical model sees a diagnosis as something to be treated and cured. The social model sees society as creating obstacles that must be removed in order for all to flourish. I will say that there has been a strong pendulum swing from the once dominant medical model. Some within the disability community see no more place for the medical model as it is dehumanizing at its core. I actually see benefits and drawbacks to both of these models. I can see where the medical model has boiled down everything to a diagnosis and a treatment, forgetting that there is a, a real person involved. And I like the emphasis of the social model on how society puts up barriers. But at the same time, I think some impairments are disabling aside from social ignorance and exclusion. Something like ALS or Lou Gehrig's disease would be disabling even in the most generous and understanding society. I'm not sure the experience of disability fits neatly into any one of the three models. But one of the things that I think is helpful, especially in the conversation of the disability comes to church, is the reflection on which of these models influences our theology the most. Do we see disabilities as a punishment from God or an example from God to teach us a lesson? Do we see disabilities as a brokenness that needs to be fixed, whether by prayers for healing or some other means? Do we see disabilities as a justice issue, where the church is called to break down the barriers that exclude people with disabilities? How we answer these questions will say a lot about what the kind of theology we have and the kind of disability ministry we'll embark on. That's something that we'll dig into in a future episode. Thanks for listening to the Disability Comes to Church podcast. If you'd like a transcript of this episode, support me on Patreon at patreon.com slash hopesreason for even just $2 per month. There's other great resources there for my supporters as well. If you need a transcript for accessibility reasons, just email me at steve at disabilityandchurch.com and I will send it to you. And please visit me at disabilityandchurch.com for blog posts and other resources on the intersection of church and disability. Thank you, and God bless.